it's true. All right. Let's talk about digestion while we're at it. The late Adele Davis was fond of saying with her little finger like this, you get up on the podium, little bitty woman. Hey, you are what you eat. So eat well. Well, she was half right. But what we learned subsequently as the baby boomers began to age is the fact that it's not quite that simplistic. Yes, it's important to try to eat well most of the time. However, if you're not absorbing the nutrients from the food, then we're not getting very far. In other words, if the goodness is coming out the back end the same way it went in the front end, we have a problem. <laughs> and so digestion and absorption need to be discussed. They belong together. Signs of digestion disorders would include gas, bloating, heartburn, feelings of fullness after a meal, acid reflux when you lay down, uh, that type of thing. And people just learn to live with that until they get sick of it, and then they go to the pharmacy and start chugging those chalky juices and eating those, you know, those round chalky things with calcium. Oh, how can bad can that be? It's totally unabsorbable, but it gives you a psychological sense of well-being. That's all. Um, every day of your life, if you are healthy, your body becomes acid and alkaline. Generally speaking, you are acidic during the daylight hours and alkaline at night. This is called, caused, uh, 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 causes the body to be able to absorb and to detoxify at different times of the day. It's called the acid alkaline tide. What would be the function of acid in your digestive system? Proteins digest only in an acid environment. Proteins are essentially uh, uh, for your entire life. The word protein in Greek means of first importance. Even the Greeks knew that when you deprive the body of protein, it wastes away. And the Greek culture uh, worshipped physiology. The classic Greek physique. Well, they achieved that by giving these athletes nothing but protein. And they found they got strong, ripped, cut, lean. And when they started adding grains back in, they got puffy. So it didn't take them long to figure out what the body really needs to maintain its, its integrity. And hence, they called them proteins of first importance. Minerals absorb only in an acid environment. So if your system is not acidic enough, you're not going to absorb calcium, magnesium, lots of them. Enzymes are formed in an acid environment. Enzymes are necessary for you to break down food, like carbohydrates primarily, some proteins. But you see, in the digestive system, it's a chain reaction. If you have no acid, you can make no enzymes. So now you've got a double digestive problem. You, you, you're bloated from the, the protein putrefaction, and you've got lower intestinal gas from the fermented carbohydrates. The stomach wants to be acidic, desperately. It has a natural pH of 4.5. If you took gastric acid and put it on the sidewalk, it would burn a hole in it. But your stomach absolutely loves it. The only time your stomach forms an ulcer or other sore is when it's too alkaline. Alkaline function. What happens when your body's alkaline, which it should be some of the time? Carbohydrates are digested in an alkaline environment only. So they're opposite of proteins. The more refined the carbohydrate, the faster it assimilates and converts to blood sugar in an alkaline environment. The small intestine is naturally alkaline. Alkaline foods and acidic foods cannot digest in the same place at the same time. So what does that mean? That means if you have a whopping big steak, baked potato and pie and ice cream all in the same hour, you have a potential problem. The chances of you going home feeling like you swallowed a melon without slicing it and can't lay down all night because of this awful juice that runs up and burns your throat are very likely. Why? because the body will digest the protein first, because it's of first importance. So now you've got the refined carbohydrates from the pie and ice cream and the potato, and they're sitting in there for three hours while the steak is being broken down, and they are fermenting at 100 degrees temperature. And you start forming gas, and you, oh, I think I'm having a heart attack, Martha. <laughs> so you run for that juice, 
And you swallow a big hunk and swallow with that. And in like 10 minutes, ah, oh, relief. So what's happening? You're destroying all the acid in your stomach. And when the acid in the stomach drops down below a certain level, it signals the pyloric valve at the bottom of your stomach to swing open, and all the contents in the stomach goes into the small intestine. Because we're done. And then the pie and ice cream and the baked potato can start digesting in the small intestine, which is alkaline. But the half-digested steak that you interrupted with that chalky juice now ferments. And there's no way for it to ever completely digest because the only acid environment has now been passed. And by taking those preparations, you successfully exchange upper intestinal gas for lower intestinal gas, which is socially less acceptable. <laughs> but you have still not solved your digestive problems, and you have still not solved your protein requirements or your mineral requirements. Process of digestion. Food enters the stomach, proteins are digested first, along with mineral uptake and the emulsification of fats from bile. All that has to take place in the stomach. One shot at it. Okay? Once proteins have been digested, contents of stomach are dumped into small intestine, which is where they should go. Then the carbohydrates can now begin digestion. If you interrupt that process before it's finished, there's, therein lies the problem. Okay? Um, what can we do to improve the digestive situation? First of all, increase the acid in your stomach, not decrease it. How do you do that? Apple cider vinegar and water. Um, you can take betaine hydrochloride, which is natural hydrochloric acid. You can get it in a health food store. You can get it in good uh, uh, digestive enzyme formulas. Um, dietarily, if you have a severe problem, Please don't consume concentrated carbohydrates with concentrated proteins at the same meal. You've heard of the old joke, you know, life short, have dessert first. They're, funny enough, biologically, that makes some sense. Because if you have carbohydrates first, they won't stay in the stomach but a short while, and they'll dump into the small intestine because that's where they belong. And then you can have the steak. However, it's not very healthy. But from the digestive point of view, you probably could solve your digestive problems with that. Whether you increased your longevity by so doing is up for discussion, but you probably technically could improve your digestion. Um, we rather like to see you do the rest the other way. Since protein is of first importance, have it first. And just don't have refined carbohydrates at the same time. So have your steak, your piece of fish, your pork chop, whatever you want, your chicken breast. Have it with some fresh or steamed or Grilled vegetables, uh, if you just got to have a starch, make sure it's very complex, like whole grain uh, uh, rice. Something that's very, very complex that'll take hours to break down because then you're not going to get the gastric distress because it'll wait. It's the refined sugars and carbohydrates that convert to glucose so rapidly that cause the fermentation. If any of you know how to make wine or beer or know anything about the alcohol process, of making alcohol, it's done by fermentation. Well, they start out with a grain or a sugar or both. And you basically are, in, inside of you, you're, you're creating a still. And you're, you're actually forming alcohol uh, uh, by the fermentation of, of, of sugars. And so here's a general rule. If you want to go out to dinner, go out, enjoy the, some vegetables. Maybe you want to have a, 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 a you know, whole grain rice with your steak. And then when the guy comes around and says, can I interest you in dessert, you just simply say no. Now let's say you really want dessert and you hate to lie to him. <laughs> what you do is you have dessert at home waiting for you. you know, and then you might stop at the market, you might go somewhere else. But you should wait about three hours and then have dessert. Now this has two benefits. One, it will improve your digestion. Two, Chances are in three hours you might be somewhere where there is no pie and ice cream and you'll avoid it altogether or have forgotten about it and that will be wonders for your waistline. So it has some potential benefit. Uh, targeted nutrition, we use things like betaine hydrochloride, enzyme precursors, fat emulsifying agents and at our research center I put together a formula that we use on our clients uh, and it's called Digestes. And it's a multifaceted formula, and it's designed to approach all types of digestive issues.